hello welcome to everyone in this video today we want to discuss some question important question on electromagnetic theory for upcoming semester examination for semester 5 under university of calcutta in physics honors right so let's start in the first question it says the what do you mean by displacement current in what sense it differ from our understanding of ordinary electric current Displacement current is that when uh, if you consider this is a parallel plate capacitor and there is oscillating elect oscillating voltage that means the electric field in this region is changed with time. In that case there is induced a current and this current is known actually displacement current. Here they retain the current due to changing electric field. When there is a change in electric field there is a producing current is called the displacement current. And this expressed as the epsilon del L by del E by del T that is the changing in the electric field. When the electric field change in this sub region, there is a produce a current is called displacement current. Now the next question is in who in what sense it differ from understanding of ordinary electric current. Actually, in ordinary electric current, the current flow due to the flow of the, the current exists due to the flow of the electron. When there is a flow of electron, they are produce a ordinary current. And the, when there is a change in electric field, then produce a displacement current. That is the basic difference between displacement current and the ordinary electric current. Go to the next question. Next question define the energy flux density of an electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field, in this electromagnetic field, there is two fields that is the electric field and the magnetic field. Due to electric field, there is the energy, this one half epsilon raised square, and due to magnetic field, there is energy h square by 2 mu naught. Overall, this total energy density is known as the energy flux density of this region. That is the energy per unit volume. Okay. So, that is the energy flux density. Next. Next question says, which one of the following is the impossible, impossible magnetic field B? Uh, that is, uh, you know, in case of the magnetic field, divergence B must be 0. Right? Because that is, there is no existence of the monopole there is dipole that is total in is equal to total out that is why divergence of B is uh, that is the flux is 0. So, if you calculate the divergence of B in these two case you can see in the first case this is 0. So, this matches so this is a possible. So, this is a possible but uh, in the second case this is not equal to 0. So, this is a impossible our question is there which one is the impossible. So, next one is the impossible magnetic field. Go to the next question. From the wave equation on conductor, prove that the wave number is complex. See, so, these two are the wave equation of the conductor. Uh, that is the wave equation of magnetic field. This is the wave equation of electric field. Now, if you consider the general solution of electric field and magnetic field in this form, and you just substitute this one, that is the gradient is nothing but derivative with respect to R. So, you will be get J square K square. J square is minus. That's why minus K square. And this is del uh, del t del del t you can get minus j omega. So if you multiply minus j omega, you will be get this one and this minus j omega square. So this one. So this actually happen when this equal to this one. Since k square co content j cap, so it must be k must be content uh, j, right? J is the root over minus one. So k is complex number. Next question. A thin polaroid placed between two crossed polaroid is allowed to rotate a, a rate omega about the common central axis. So there is two crossed polaroid, this one and this one. Okay, and there is in between the third one uh, which is rotated with omega. Determine the intensity transmitted light in terms of the intensity of unpolarized light. So if there is unpolarized intensity I0, so this comes into polarized with the intensity I0 by 2. If there is a component uh, angle theta I1, so from Malus law, this I1 is nothing but I0 by 2 cos square theta. Again, from uh, I1 to I2, there is another angle change that is 90 minus theta. So, this is cos I square theta. So, if you put this value, you will be obtained this one. So, the intensity of right hand with uh, respect to I0 will be like one. Okay. <coughs> Next. A plane polarized light of wavelength 550 nanometer changes to circularly polarized light on passing through a quartz crystal cut parallel uh, to optic axis. Calculate minimum thickness of produce such effect given this 
uh, uh, refractive index difference of the extraordinary and the ordinary wave is like that. Ire, Ire, extraordinary ray, and Ore means ordinary ray. <laughs> the plane polarized light can change into the circularly polarized light by passing through the quarter wave plate, right? This is the plane polarized light. When it passes through the quarter wave plate, it will convert it into circularly polarized light. And the formula of the minimum thickness will be d equals to lambda by 4 into this. Actually, it is thickness into this one, <coughs> that is the optical path length, will be lambda by 4. So, finally, you will be get d equal to lambda by 4, any minus n0. Just put this value of lambda 4 and this is just, you will be get this one, okay. Next, <coughs> describe the complete state of polarization of the electronic wave described. So, this is the Ex and this is Ey. So, these two are like that. So, this gives you this relation. And this is the relation of straight lines. So, this is a plane polarized light. Okay. Next, linearly polarized light. Next, <coughs> what is booster angle? And a glass of block emerged in water, find the booster angle. Actually, the incident angle for which the reflected ray and the refracted ray make an angle 90 degree. And that moment, this reflected part will be polarized, linearly polarized. So, this angle of incident is known as the booster angle for which these two make the angle 90 degree. So, from Shane's law, you can give uh, that is N1 sin theta sin IP and this is into sin R. R is nothing but because this is 90. So, IP plus R is 90. So, from here, you will be get this one. So, from this, you will be easily find out tan IP equals to N2 by N1. So, if equal to handball, this one. So, this is the booster angle of that situation. I think clear if there is any doubt, you must comment in the comment box. This is all about me and this is my contact detail. You can connect with this telegram channel. This is my YouTube channel details. Go to this channel. You will get a friend favorite video, some mathematics like this session. If you learn something from this session, share this video to your friends. Either he or she also get a benefit from this video. Subscribe the channel. If you need this channel, those already subscribed. Thanks for watching, sir. Press the bell icon to get notification of our video. So take care. We'll meet you in the next video as soon as possible. Thank you.